remember to record today. All right, great to see you all. Uh, thank you for muting. Um, move to your mat and take a comfortable seated position. Um, if your back is bothering you and lying down is more comfortable, go ahead and do that. Uh, as we are sitting, go ahead and shrug your shoulders up on the inhale and then exhale your shoulders down your back. So your posture should be straight, but not a bit relaxed in it. Um, feel your sitting bones making contact on the mat. You can tuck your chin forward just a little bit and close your eyes. Your hands can be resting in your lap. Um, again, you can use pillows if your legs are way up or you might be deciding to lie down, whatever's most comfortable in your body this morning. We're gonna take that moment of sacred silence. You can close your eyes and just pay attention to your breath. You can set your intention for the practice, that thing that you would like to focus on, um, sending some positive energy in whatever way you choose this morning. So go ahead and close your eyes Settle in and breathe. Bring one hand to your belly and one hand to your heart. Continue to breathe. We're moving towards pranayama ujjayi breath to warm up our inside and get everything moving. So on your next exhale, um, and you can use that hand that's gently pressing on your belly to help you, exhale all of the air out of your lungs And sealing your lips, breathe in slowly and deeply through your belly, up through your chest, and imagine all the way to the top of your head. When you get to the top of your breath, pause for a moment, open your mouth, and sigh it out. When you get to the bottom of your breath, seal your lips and breathe in again slowly. When you get to the top of your breath this time, see if you can take one more sip of air. Pause for a moment and open your mouth and breathe out. Sealing your lips at the bottom of your breath. Inhale slowly. This time, when you get to the top of your breath, keep your lips sealed, but keep that growl in the back of your throat. Go ahead and take several rounds of this breath at your own pace. You can pause at the top and the bottom of your breath for as long as you want. You might make it equal. That calms down um, your uh, central nervous system. Um, or you can just pause for a moment. Just see what your body says that you need this morning with your breathing. If you need more calming effect, hold your breath longer between your breath. Your mind starts to wander, come back to the breath. Concentrate on the air coming in and out of your nose.
On your next exhale, then gently open your eyes and we'll inhale up, arms up, look up. And exhale, twisting to the right, right arm behind you, left hand on your right knee. And on the inhale, back to center. And exhale to the left, left arm behind you. Inhale to center. And exhale to the right. Inhale to center. And exhale to the left. Inhale to center, changing it up a little bit with your right hand down, left arm up, bend to the right. You could come down on your forearm. You might just be bending with your hand down. Inhale back to center and exhale to the left. Inhale back to center, looking up and exhale to the right. Inhale back to center and exhale to the left. Inhale back to center and hands back in your lap. Come back to your natural breath. Go ahead and bend your head down towards your chest as far as you can. You can close your eyes if you like. Come back to your natural breath and you should feel a good stretch in the back of your neck here. Move your neck towards your left shoulder. I'm sorry. Yes, move your chin towards your left shoulder. Still looking down. You can have your eyes closed if you like. And breathe here. Come back to center. And then send your chin to the right shoulder or the opposite shoulder. Feel a good stretch in the left side of your neck. Go ahead and then do some head rotations very slowly, getting into every nook and cranny. You might have some snap, crackle, and pop this morning. That's okay. And take it in the opposite direction. Breathing. There's no holding breath in yoga. Make sure you keep breathing in and out through your nose. And we'll come back to center. You can always put your hand on top of your head to bring your equilibrium back. Let's do some um, body twists. If your hand's on your lap, if that works for you, you can come forward and twist around coming back very slowly in your back. And come back the other way. And then come back to center. We're going to move to our back. And when you get on your back, you can take that good morning stretch with your hands overhead, your toes pointed, really stretching in opposite directions on the inhale and on the exhale, let everything just flop back down into the mat, your shoulders, your hands, just let everything relax. And on the inhale, pulling and stretching and really tensing up all of your muscles everywhere in your body. And on the exhale, let all of those muscles go back into the mat. Inhale, stretching and exhale, um, letting it go into the mat. Inhale, Stretching, and this time, exhale your knees into your chest. You could have your hands behind your shins and take a gentle roll side to side on your lower spine. That should feel good. Go ahead and send your left leg out long or you can bend your knee to protect your lower back and have your foot on the mat, whatever works in your back. We always want to protect that. Um, and then go ahead and inhale and pull your knee towards your right armpit. And on the exhale, relax. Inhaling, pull. 
Exhale, relax into the mat. Inhaling, pull. Exhale and relax. And then let's take those, uh, take your hand to the top of your right knee, left hand out to your side and draw big circles on the ceiling, waking up your hip joint. Make sure you're breathing in and out through your nose deeply. One of my yoga books that was written in British English would say that you breathe in the nutrients and exhale the rubbish. And we're getting the rubbish out with every exhale on a cellular level. Go ahead and inhale your knee to your right armpit. And exhale, sink into the mat. Inhale it now to the center of your chest. And exhale and send your right leg out to meet your left. And of course your right leg is much longer than your left leg now. So let's even up those legs and bring it in. Inhaling, um, inhaling your left knee towards your left armpit. And exhaling back into the mat, inhaling. And exhaling into the mat, inhaling full. And exhaling, relax, left hand on left kneecap, draw those big circles, keep breathing. When you're, you're actually doing some detox on a cellular level, your mitochondria are working as you breathe in and out to get the rubbish out of your cells. And then take those circles in the opposite direction. And when you come back to center, go ahead and clasp your shin again and inhale towards your armpit again. And exhale, relax. Inhaling, pull. And exhale, relax. Inhaling this time towards your middle of your chest. And exhale, relax. Inhaling, pull. And exhale, relax. Take a nice stretch overhead. And then you can bring your knees in again on the exhale. Go ahead and rock side to side. We're going to meet in tabletop. You can get there by ro taking some um, spines, roller rolling on your spine if you like and crossing over. Or you can get straight there if you'd like to take some spine rolls, take your hands to the back of your thighs. And you can roll and you can roll all the way up to the back of your neck if you like, taking some nice rolls. And then come up and over and we will land in tabletop with your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hip. Um, take a quick check, look between um, and to see your toes. If you can see your toes, move them out so that you can't see them. Make sure you're clawing your finger pads, your fingers are spread like starfish and let's take some cats and cows. So inhaling, drop your belly and look up and exhale, arch. And when you come up, you can always come up on your fingertips if you'd like for some extra arch here. Also, it takes some of the pressure off your wrists and we will um, inhale and drop and lift and exhale and arch. Inhale and drop and lift. Exhale, tap. Inhale and drop. Come back to your um, neutral tabletop. Go ahead and look over your right shoulder and swing your right hip to the right on the exhale. Inhaling back through center and exhale to the left. Inhale back to center and exhale to the right. Inhale back to center and exhale to the left and coming back to center. Go ahead and send your left leg out long and then pick it up and bring it to the right so that it's out on the floor as far as you can. And look over your right shoulder for an extra twist here and take a couple of breaths here and breathe. Go ahead and pick your toes up and bring them back and then you can come back to tabletop. Send your right leg out long, toes to the floor, tuck, and then lift your right leg up and send it over to the left, dropping your toes to the floor. 
And you can look over your left shoulder and you should feel a good stretch in your right side here. Breathe. And come back to center with your knee coming down. Go ahead and tuck your toes and walk your hands back as far as you can. It might be that you are up. It might be that you can sit on your heels. So you'll go towards sitting on your heels if you can, stretching out the tops of your feet. Breathe here. You shouldn't feel any shooting pain. You might feel a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a challenge. And breathe here. Go ahead and walk your hands forward and then bring your feet gently to their tops and you can walk back again and sit on or towards your feet. And then if you want to, you can keep walking your hands back and you can pop your knees up and stretch the tops of your feet. Go ahead and tuck your toes. And if downward dog is in your practice, you can come up. If not, you can do some cats and cows here. Go ahead and tuck and come up to downward dog. You're pushing with your hands. You're coming up. You're sending your heels towards the floor. You can walk your dog by moving back and forth a little bit. Again, it's perfectly fine. If this is not in your practice, you can stay in tabletop. Go ahead and take little tiny baby steps until you are up with your hands on either side and you can bend your knees. You can take your feet hip width distance apart. A good measure for that is two fists between your feet. Make sure your feet are straight, that the toes are not pointing out or in. And you can rest your belly on your chest here. Grab for opposite elbows and we're in that rag doll. Let your head, neck and shoulders go if that works for you. You can sway gently back and forth if you like. Go ahead and let your hands go and come up one vertebrae at a time. Your head will be the last thing to come up. And we'll go ahead and stretch up. And we're going to take a balance. So find somewhere that you can uh, balance. It might be on your mat. It might be that the floor is a little bit better. So let's go ahead. We'll take that tree pose this morning. We're going to start on our left side. You can actually pick whichever side you like to start on first. So the, the standing foot, I'm going to start on my left side. Um, I'm going to bend my knee a little bit. I'm going to lift up my toes and put them down and make sure you really feel the four corners of your feet here. Um, with this pose, we're going to kickstand our right leg out like it's facing out to the right. And it might be that you're going to keep your toes on the ground here in a kickstand. That's absolutely fine. You can bring your legs up your shin. You can use your hands if you want to get fancy and bring it all the way up to your thigh. Look at something that is not moving in your room, which would not be me on the screen because I'm moving. And if you like, you can grow your tree branches by lifting your hands up. Keep a slight bend in your left knee. Try to take the death grip out of your toes. If you fall out, just get right back in and breathe. Go ahead and bring your knee up and to the front and you'll bring it down to meet your other foot and you can gently rock back and forth. Go ahead then and we'll do that on the other side. So lift your toes on your right foot or your other foot and put them back down, making sure you feel the four corners of your feet. Same thing on this side, this side will feel different. Your left knee is shooting out towards the left. You can stay on your toes, you can come up to your shin, you can come up to your um, thigh if you like for a little more challenge. Look at something that's not moving. 
uh, in yoga, in Sanskrit, this is called the drishti, that is your gaze point, your focal point of where you're looking in each pose. So find something that's not moving. If you want to grow your branches, you can. If you fall out, just get right back in. And don't forget, don't hold your breath, breathe. It's okay for swaying a little bit, strong trees sway in the breeze. Go ahead and bring your left knee up and we'll bring that down. We're going to meet in a seated position, whatever comfortable seat you would like to take. And let's uh, do some of that pranayama breath before we move into our first yin pose this morning. So let's shrug our shoulders up and down on the inhale and on the exhale. And it should be a very loud breath. You might need a tissue handy. So let's take about 20 of those. And you can come back to your natural breath when you're ready. Next, bring your arms up, elbows parallel, um, and you're gonna open on the inhale and on the exhale, you'll close. Remember your arms don't touch each other. Um, we'll take about 20 of these. And when you're ready, come back to your natural breath. Make a fist with your thumb on the outside. This is a loose fist, not like you're actually hitting somebody fist. And we're going to punch up at the sky. And on the exhale, we'll bring our elbows down. And so about 20 of these. Come back to your natural breath. It might feel good to bring your arms out and to do a little twisting here. Any feelings that you, anything you need to twist or move before we move into our first yin pose. So if you will come to a seated position and let's get my music going here. If you will come to a seated position on your mat with your legs out in front of you. And just um, some reminders, have the, lots of pillows um, ready. Um, sometimes it feels good to take the edge of a pillow and sit on the edge of it um, so that you can lean forward a little bit and that will tilt your spine. Um, it might be that you want to put some pillows here. Um, you can bend your knees and put some pillows underneath them. Um, we're going to, just going to do that simple forward fold. Um, so whatever you need for this pose. So legs out in front of you. If you're feeling any tension in your lower back this morning, go ahead and flex your feet towards your chest, towards your face. And that will help your lower back to not pinch so much. Later in the pose, you can let your feet just flop open. So um, go ahead and flex as you move because we're going to be bending just forward fold this morning. So inhale up. And then with your flat back, just start to come forward. Your hands can land anywhere. Use any pillows or props that you like. Sometimes it feels good. Um, you know, in yoga classes, we have these bolsters, but you can use almost any pillow. You can put something here and just lean on it because that can help you to just relax and let everything go. So go ahead, find whatever works for you and your body. Again, if you feel a pinch in your back, if you feel a lot of pain in your back, back out and do something else. Um, you can always just lie down in Shavasana or get in child's pose at any time. So go ahead and come into the pose, whatever that looks like in your body this morning.
make sure you're breathing and not holding any tension. Let your shoulders go. Let your head flop. Don't hold anything. Let everything melt toward the ground. come up one vertebrae at a time and move your pillows away come back down to your back leaving your knees bent we're going to bend our spine in the opposite direction so uh you're going to go ahead and have your feet you might be able to touch your heels with your fingertips um have your hands flat on the ground and go ahead and lift your hips up you can kind of scoot your shoulders underneath and see how high you can lift your hips. If you'd like to go a little higher, you can always clasp your hands underneath and really push here. This is a bridge pose. Bending our spines in these ways um, are really good for helping with posture. Um, they've actually done studies, people um, who do yoga, um, Sometimes they don't, uh, you know, do that bone compression, you know, where you're shorter after a while. You can actually improve your spine and decrease shrinkage and heights by stretching in these different ways. Go ahead and come back down to the mat. And then go ahead and stretch up. Again, hip heel, see if you can get your hips as high to the ceiling as you can, really challenge yourself here. And come back down. We're gonna roll over and meet in tabletop. And go ahead and bring your toes together and your hips wide and sink back towards your feet. If you can come back to your feet, then you can do this child's pose without any um, adjustment. If you're not meeting your feet, Take as many pillows as you need between so that you're sitting a little higher. Um, you also might need some as you come forward. If your head is not meeting the ground, just put something here, you know, some pillows or something so that you are leaning in this way. Uh, we're going to do a wide-legged child pose. This is going to be good as a hip opener. It also will stretch our lower back. We'll do something a little bit different this time, though, with our hands. Take your hands in prayer when we're down. And this, um, you might wanna look at the screen for a second. I'm gonna put my hands on the back of my neck. So I'm gonna come down and I'm going to put my elbows on the ground and my hands in prayer. 
behind my head like this so I'm gonna move this pillow because that's not working in my body and so you can be you'll be like this and pillows anywhere you need them either um so for sitting on or in front of your chest to lean on and then try to relax into this modified child's pose with hands in prayer if this prayer behind your neck is not working you can always bring your hands down um, but this will give you a good stretch in your shoulders as well um, by having your hands in prayer on the back of your neck your chin is towards your chest here and see if you can just relax into the ground and breathe Make sure you're breathing and not holding any tension anywhere. Let your shoulders go. Let your neck go. Let everything melt to the ground. and come up and bringing your knees together you can come up into tabletop and we're going to sink back down again towards our feet again same rules if you need pillows between so, so your knees are together this time and then taking your hands out stretch forward as much as you can with your hands and your head will come down you might need a pillow here um, to put your forehead on. So you should be resting. And this will stretch the top part of your spine. Again, you can tuck your chin towards your chest here and just breathe. Um, an alternate is um, you can, instead of having your hands in front of you, you can take your hands now that you've stretched and put them on the tops of your hands behind you um, so that your head is forward and your hands are up. And this will help to stretch the top of your neck. So you can begin with your hands in front of you. You can try it both ways and see which works best in your body, what your body, which stretch is better, what feels like you need in your body this morning. 
Go ahead and breathe. your arms and shoulders go and breathe. ahead and come up very slowly. Uh, we're going to move toward figure four. Um, it might be that you're in the middle of the floor, crossing your knee and um, your knee, you're, you should try to get your leg really kind of perpendicular to your other leg. Um, and this might be your pose. This might be getting enough of a hip stretch. Um, everyone's body's different. So you might be feeling it here, but if you need more of a stretch, you'll pull that up and put your hand through and grab. Um, same thing, I'm gonna practice at the wall this morning because that's my favorite. Um, I love legs up the wall. And so if you're gonna to come to the wall, go ahead and send your legs up the wall. And since I've been teaching some live classes recently, um, it helps me to see uh, what's happening in other people's bodies. Um, when you cross your knee, um, I had, um, Someone who's pretty young, but I think he was a runner, and this was as far as he went. So his foot didn't come down. So it might just be that crossing this action is giving you the same thing. Uh, but what you can do is you can start to let gravity let your left leg slide down the wall any amount. So you shouldn't feel any pinching or pain in your hip, but you should feel a good stretch. So find the figure four that works for you and your body. Of course, you are welcome to practice traditional pigeon pose if you like, it's the same stretch. So go ahead and find your figure four. If you're at the wall like me, you can just let your arms flop if you are in the middle of the room and have your hand through. Um, your right elbow will be behind your right knee and just let your shoulders and everything relax into the mat. Mm -hmm. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, just melt into the ground and breathe.
ahead and unwind. If you're on the floor, you can take a good morning stretch. If you're on the wall, you can send your legs up the wall. It might feel good to stretch your arms over your head. And pause here for a moment and just breathe. When you're ready, we'll take it on the opposite side, so crossing your left angle under your right knee or the opposite, uh, the opposite side of the one you just did. If you're at the wall, this might be your pose. Um, flop your arms. You can start to let that right leg walk down the wall any amount. So stop, don't, don't ever force your body. But you'll get to a point where you feel the stretch that you need in your left hip. Sending important blood flow there. Go ahead and breathe. Close your eyes. Relax. you are breathing and relaxing all of your muscles. and unwind, sending your legs up the wall if you're at the wall with me, or stretching. Um, if you're at the wall with me, you can come around through yogi fetal position. If you're on the floor, you're already in the right place. Go ahead and stretch out long. Um, you can have pillows ready if you need them. We're going to do some side stretching. So if you'll go ahead and lie on your back, and then go ahead and bring your left knee in and hold on to it with your right hand. Send your left hand out to the side and gently pull your knee towards the right. 
in any amount. So you're, you put just a little weight on the side of your knee here with your knee bent. Um, your left shoulder should not be popping up. And then go ahead and turn your head if it works for you and look at your left hand. And then you can close your eyes here. Go ahead and breathe. Just my stretch. <laughs> And to protect your back, if you need to have a bend in your right leg, you can. Um, you can either have it straight or bent, whatever works for your back. You certainly don't want to have pinch in your back, but you should have a good stretch. unwind coming back to center you might take a gentle stretch in between you can bend your knees and put your feet on the floor and take a gentle windshield wiper of your knees back and forth go ahead and send your right leg out long we're going to take this on the opposite side so right hand on your left knee and start to turn towards your right side. Oh, sorry, <laughs> opposite side. Uh, we're going to turn um, with your right hand out, your left hand on your right knee. I'm sorry, I was repeating the side again. I got confused for a second. And go ahead and turn towards your left. Your right shoulder should not pop up this time. And then you can turn towards your right hand and settle in. Again, you can you can bend your left knee if you need to. And just breathe here. You should feel a good stretch in your right side. And breathe. <laughs>
come back to center and you can stretch and you can windshield wiper your legs. Um, you can come up and roll gently on your spine. Happy baby is always a great way to finish up where you take your feet like you're walking on the ceiling, keeping your legs wide um, with your knees going towards your armpits. You can grab for your legs. If you can reach your feet, grab for the outside of your feet, um, perhaps your toes. Um, and you can just gently rock here the way a baby would. And you can stretch your leg one at a time if you like. Whatever feels good in your body before you settle into your final Shavasana. If you like legs up the wall, I suggest you can go ahead and take that, um, you know, for your Shavasana. If not, you can meet on the floor and lie down. Um, with your feet wider than your hips, width distance apart, let your feet just flop to the four corners of your mat. Adjust your shoulders so that they're underneath you. Um, hands at your side, palms up or down. Go ahead and move your chin towards your chest a little bit so you can relax the back of your neck. So relax your head, relax your jaw, take the tongue off the roof of your mouth. Relax your shoulders, let them just go. Let your elbows go. Let your hands and fingers totally relax. Let your hips relax, your thighs, your knees. And let your feet just go. And check out your body and see how you're feeling. Go ahead and close your eyes and breathe here. and start to wiggle your fingers and toes. You might take a good morning stretch over your head and then turn to your favorite side, bending your knees, using your bottom arm as a pillow and just pause in this yogi fetal position for a moment, seeing how you feel. You can even close your eyes here for just a moment. You can stay here or you can move back to Shavasana or you can, when you're ready, Push yourself up slowly into a comfortable seated position. Thank you so much for practicing with me this morning. I value all of your friendships and uh, the light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste, that's what namaste means. Uh, we're going to finish uh, with Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. You can sing along with me um, at home, um, or you can just listen. Remember, Shanti is peace, and it's the three levels of peace. It's the, you know, save me from wars and earthquakes, first Shanti. Second Shanti is save me from my neighbor's leaf blowers, etc. And the third Shanti is that peace of mind uh, that we can achieve. And hopefully we all achieve maybe just a little moment of that in our yoga practice. So everyone inhale together and on the exhale we'll om and shanti. So inhale. Om shanti, shanti, shanti. Thank you so much for practicing 
with me today. Wonderful to see you all here. Thanks, Anne. It's great. Thank you. Thank you, Anne.